Good evening, everyone. Time for another silver update. This is the Dow Jones Weekly Average provided by NetDania.com. You can click on the link below. Now, I've drawn a couple of things in here. The first is a trend channel that uh, was in effect for the bulk of President Bush's second term and uh, part of the end of his first term. So you can see that uh, for the bulk of his entire almost five years here that uh, President Bush was blessed with a rising stock market of course that's very important because that's what everybody looks at the Dow Jones Industrial is it rising that means everything's okay now the actually the economic numbers were much better than they are right now during this bull run but you can see that this other trend channel here is actually sharper this is the bull market that Barack Obama has been blessed with and you can see started right here in March of 2009 pretty much right after he had taken office and it's been a bull run ever since now we're starting to round off roll over and uh, are we going to have a repeat now this line that I've drawn here this is the cross of the zero line on the MACD so you can see that when the MACD crossed the zero line here uh, we had actually not really corrected that much and we got a rally from there of course it didn't reach the zero line and then it turned down then we got the dramatic decline all the way down to six uh, six thousand something on the Dow now we're going to be approaching that same point here you can see that the bottom line on the MACD is at about 150 or so zero is not that far off with the current rate of decline it's projected to come in before the beginning of next year and uh, we may get across of this trend line now in the in the past in the last bull market the cross of that trend line uh, resulted in a rally but ultimately there was a crash below it and that's when the real economic crisis occurred so we're a ways away from that we're still a good uh, maybe thousand points away uh, that trend line somewhere around 13.8 or so so if we do cross over that line and we do get a bear market out of this uh, then of course all bets are going to be off now we know that it's in the interest of any president who's in office to have a bull market um, in the past the president is the one who gets the blame or the credit as the saying goes the buck stops here now that may be a little bit different with the Obama administration it seems that Obama is better at blame than probably the last few presidents that we've had so Perhaps we could get a bear market and uh, Obama will be able to scapegoat his enemies, whether that's the Republicans, the neocons, or the Tea Party, or some faction in the Congress, and uh, shift the blame to someone else. But it does appear that we're going to get a bear market fairly soon in stocks. Uh, these five-year periods of bull markets are very rare we did have one similar to this under Clinton and also under Reagan but eventually they come to an end and we get a rapid decline so we're watching that very closely now I want to take you over to this story about PBS now you know that we have a tremendous amount of propaganda about this debt limit the uh, government shutdown and uh, we cover that on the Silver for the People blog. All the stories related to that. I don't have time to go into them. The stories about the national parks being shut down, the monuments being shut down. It's pretty clear from watching the action of the federal government that they are trying to cause the most pain for the people and the least pain for the government. Now, this story is fascinating because this happened right at the opening salvo of this government shutdown 
PBS, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Now, I occasionally listen to them when I get so sick of listening to Rush or Handy, so I kind of ping bong back and forth between neocons and uh, communists, I'll call them. So this is the uh, state-sponsored communist uh, broadcasting corporation. We can see they got a half a billion dollars on the first day of the, they call it a slim down here, it's a shutdown. Funding for clinical cancer trials and other life-saving research under the National Institutes of Health was cut off in response to government slim down, but it looks like the cookie monster will still be knee-deep in chocolate chips, or is it carrots? Now, according to the Daily Treasury statement and first reported by CNS News, the administration dished out $445 million to the Corporation for Public Broadcasting on the first day of the slim down, which means funds for the likes of PBS NewsHour, NPR, and Sesame Street are being spent before cancer research. Quote, it's more than irresponsible. It is reprehensible. It's an in-your-face move by the administration, blatantly picking winners and losers in this shutdown, said C. Edmund Wright, columnist for Breitbart.com and American Thinker. And as Media Research Center's Director of Media Analysis, Tim Graham, pointed out, PBS hosted two very friendly interviews with President Obama in recent weeks. Quote, it certainly looks like you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours, he continued. Liberals see PBS and NPR as their own personal sandbox. Now, I don't know if you listen to those. Uh, I, I listen to them as long as I can until I have to turn them off. There's no question that these are far left news organs, uh, Mockingbird Media left, and there's Mockingbird Media right. Of course, at least Fox News uh, is a business that uh, actually pays their bills. So they're going to tell us why uh, it's important that they not be shut down here. Uh, we've got a quote here. United States Treasury sent public broadcasters their two-year advanced appropriation, a sum approved by Congress in 2012 for fiscal year 2014, representing only 0.01% of the federal budget. Well, that's not much if you say it fast. Said Representative Kelly Broadway, quote, 70% of these indispensable dollars are promptly sent to locally owned and operated stations in cities and rural communities across the country as they have been for the past 40 years. There they provide jobs for more than 20,000 people. Think about that people. 20,000 government workers spewing out government propaganda who are working to support America's largest classroom as well as lifelong learning for all Americans with our unique cultural public affairs and news programs. So I, I can't say any more on that. I'll, I'll get sick. But anyway, so there is your indispensable government spending for 20,000 government news agents. And uh, a big story on the government news media is that Janet Yellen is now going to be the replacement of Ben Bernanke. I want to take a look at Janet Yellen really quick here. Janet Yellen is absolutely the textbook Federal Reserve chairman, chairperson, chairwoman, whatever you want to say. But uh, she is Ivy League, Harvard, MIT, you name it. All of the uh, inside groups uh, never run a business, as far as I can tell, never worked a job, never done anything but read and regurgitated Keynesian nonsense. So let's read some of this. Janet Lewis, Louise Yellen, born in 1946, is an American economist and professor who's the vice chair of the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System. Previously, she was president and chief executive officer of the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco, Chair of the White House Council of Economic Advisors under Bill Clinton. Professor Emerita at the University of California, Berkeley. That's right, the uh, Fruits and Nuts University on the left coast. Haas School of Business uh, on October 19, 2013. President Obama nominated Yellen to be the first female chair of the Federal Reserve. 
Yellen was born in Brooklyn, New York, daughter of Anna Blumenthal and Julius Yellen, a doctor. She graduated from Fort Hamilton High School in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, graduated summa cum laude from Brown University. That Yeah, that's the far-left feminist university. With a degree in economics in 1967, received her Ph.D. from Yale in 1971. Yellen is Jewish. That's going to give your anti-Semites a lot more ammunition going forward. And is married to George Eckerloff, Nobel Prize winning economist, Professor Emeritus at Cal Berkeley. Yellen was an assistant professor at Harvard in 1971 through 1976, and an economist with the Federal Reserve Board of Governors, 77 through 78. So... Let's go down and look at the career path here. Here's the positions held, 1974, a fellow at MIT, 71 through 76, the Department of Economics at Harvard, 77, Economist, Division of International Finance, Trade and Financial Studies Section, Board of Governors, Federal Reserve. So it was picked up right out of Harvard University, straight into the Federal Reserve, Became a lecturer at the London School, assistant professor at Berkeley, associate professor at Berkeley, professor at Berkeley, member board of governors, chair of economic advisors, president and CEO of Federal Reserve Bank San Francisco. By the way, uh, when does a government agency have a CEO? And president, vice chair, board of governors, Federal Reserve System. So. This is textbook, uneducated, uneducated uh, as far as the real world um, Federal Reserve chair, perfect for the job. In other words, not knowing anything about the re real world, only knowing things that are written in books by Keynesian economists. Now, she's supposedly a dove. Uh, I don't know if that's true, but... Uh, I would guess that's probably so, so we may get a lot more money printing coming out of the new Federal Reserve Chair. Now I want to go over and look at the Lunar Series real quick. I've been watching this one real close. The 2014 Lunar Series Horse, I had recommended that, uh, picking up a few when it came out at 37. It still hasn't really fallen below that. The best deal that we have right now is this 1437 for the half ounce on Gainesville coin. So you're looking at about 2880 an ounce or so. And uh, with Gainesville, it's a little bit different. You have to click, uh, put a big number in, click it, and you can see they have 2200 available there. And on the one ounce, Actually, that's the two ounce. And on the one ounce, they've only got about 490 of those left. Now, on that two ounce, you're looking at a price of 53.42. So, if you're talking about just the amount of numismatic silver you're getting for your dollar, Definitely this 5342 price for 50 plus of the two ounces is going to be your best deal. You're talking about roughly 2650 an ounce and we are around a spot price of about 2185. So about five bucks above spot for that two ounce. Now at max on the other hand doesn't have quite as good of a deal on the coin you can see they have 399 left of the half ounce at 1546 and the one ounce they have 409 at 3694 so right now as I did with the dragon series I'm favoring the half ounce and the two ounce a lot more than I'm favoring the one ounce because the premium is so much higher now the premium on the one ounce horse is nothing like it was on the dragon we know that atmex and almost all of the others came out with a 99 dollar price on that uh, dragon and pretty much held that the entire time 
whereas this this horse series and I did take delivery of a few of these and it does have a very good frost type of background on this you can't really see it when you go and look at the coin online but it really is in my opinion uh, the best they've done so far artistically so this is going to be a coin we're going to watch very closely I did pick up a few for that 36 37 price but we're hoping that they're going to come down my guess is they probably won't my guess is they'll probably increase slowly I don't think many were ordered so we'll just keep an eye on that so back to the main story that's going to be watching silver and watching stocks the stocks appear to be rolling over and it looks like it is the beginning of the end of this bull market in stocks the president has been graced with a nearing five-year bull market now if you remember President Obama came out and said that uh, when this debt ceiling issue started to begin to stall he wasn't getting his way he implied that the markets were going to have to get punished so it does appear that the markets are going to be punished until he gets his way and his way is going to be more printing of money and uh, we will then get Janet Yellen and uh, probably get the uh, spigots turned on full blast at that point and we'll talk to you next time